Hello, my name is Arnaud Delorme, and I'm the main designer of the EGLAB software for processing EG data. This is part three, source resolve EG brain dynamics. And historically, uh, EG has been used a little bit like uh, reaction time in psychophysics experiments, just as a marker. And we've discussed that in the first part, where, uh, for instance, in EG, you can extract the latency and amplitude of different waves in the average, like the P1, the N1, the P3. And then researchers were not necessarily interested in, in knowing what was going on inside the brain. They were just using these as, as marker, and these marker were relevant for what we are doing. But really, over the past 15 years, there have been a strong push to really bring back EEG to its underlying substrate, which is neuronal activity. We've talked about that in the previous uh, presentation, but here's this presentation is more about trying to find from the scalp activity what's going on in the brain. So we record uh, data from different sites and we want to know what's going on inside the brain. So here, for instance, we have a subject record its data. This is the raw data for this subject. Then we select, for instance, a specific latency here indicated by the red bar and this is the activity at different channels uh, at this specific latency and each dot represents one electrode you have some dot outside of the of the head model here you see the head model with the nose in the front and the ears on the side because basically they're below the midline so they're still on the head but to represent them we just put them outside because it's more convenient and then these numbers, you can imagine that they can represent elevation on the 3D landscape. And then you can build the surface. So this is very similar, for instance, when they build elevation map of mountains. And uh, project this back on, on the scalp. And now each dot again is one electrode. And then when it's blue, it means low potential activity. And when it's red, it means high potential activity. You can also project that on the 3D model of the head of the subject. So how do we find uh, activity, what's, what's going on in the brain using this, this kind of uh, representation? Well, this is the observed potential or field at a given latency. And what we want to know is which source is active. So the dots here represent activity in the cortex and the arrow represents a, a, poten a potential electric field at that location. And then there's two, uh, two problems here. One is called the forward problem. So this is from known source activity on the left, try to reconstruct the scalp channel activity and that's a problem what's well posed and we'll see how to solve it. And then there's a much harder problem which is called the inverse problem. From the inverse problem is starting from the scalp channel activity trying to find the activity of the source in the brain. So first the forward problem. So the forward problem is well posed because it can always be solved. And for the forward problem we require first a head model uh, so this is a spherical head model on top. You have different layers and so different geometry and the conductivity uh, between uh, each layers and of each layers. And on the bottom, you can have a more complex model with more complex geometry. And then you also need the sensor locations, uh, which are represented here. And then you need possible source distribution. So here represented by the red arrow. So you need to know where each source can be and what kind of orientation it can take and what's the amplitude of, of these sources. If you have a fixed set of sources, you use a solver and you can calculate the activity on the surface of the scalp. So that's the forward problem. Since there is no unique solution, the inverse problem, uh, which is the uh, going back from scalp activity to a source level, is L posed. There is no single solution. There is many different configuration of source that can give rise to the same scalp uh, activity. So what do you, what do we do? So first we can constrain the model. So one way to constrain the model is to use single dipoles or a, a, sing, a, a finite set of dipoles, which are point-like uh, dipole inside the brain. 
and we optimize their uh, location. We can also use distributed source model and impose constraint on the model. For instance, uh, the Loretta assumes a smooth distribution. Then you have also a solution for minimal norm, minimal currents, which impose different uh, constraints. And then on top of that, you also have algorithm for solving the inverse rate pro the inverse problem. And these uh, add additional constraints. For instance, uh, you have music or beam forming, which scan the whole brain with single dipole and compute filter at every location and add additional constraint to find the optimal, uh, locate, uh, the optimal activity of this uh, dipole. Or, uh, as in EEG lab, you can perform ICA decomposition, so ICA is independent component analysis, and that's one of the main algorithm for which EEG lab is known. And that uses higher order statistics to uh, extract projection of source on the scalp, and in quote, simple maps. And the advantage of ICA solves the first half of the inverse problem. So what, what is ICA? So ICA is uh, here we have activity of the time of uh, different channels. We have three frontal channels and then we have six parietal occipital channels. And this is a simple task we've work presented. Sometimes the subject is wrong, sometimes you're correct. And uh, this is, for example, the one component. This is the first component and each component has an activity, so the same as uh, every channel, and also has a scalp map or a spatial filter associated with it. This is, for instance, a component that represents blink. Uh, you can see here uh, that it's, the blink seems to happen just after the response of the, the subject. It's pretty systematic after the, the subject responds. The blink, you also have many other components, usually as many as uh, channels, and for example, this is uh, ECG, so this is heart with uh, uh, scalp topography associated with it. You can see here, for instance, if you when you have a heartbeat, it's it's present in the scalp channels, but it's, it's highly uh, it's it's buried in noise. And I see I was able to extract it. Here we have EMG, so cont muscular contraction here of the temporal muscle with a typical scalp map here uh, over the temporal area. The first two, uh, the first one we already talked about, the second one is also a blink uh, component. And then we have other components which represent physiological activity. For instance, this is uh, theta rhythm, so five oscillation uh, per second, which are clearly visible in this component over frontal area. So this component is called frontal midline theta rhythm. We also have here uh, typical components, which is over occipital uh, activity of our occipital region with burst of alpha here, 10 oscillation per second. What's interesting for this one is like the ERP is plotted underneath, and you can see that the ERP is red, is is almost flat. So these are independent components. This is the scalp topography for the alpha rhythm. And the advantage of using these components and, and what we mean by ICA solves the inverse, uh, the first half of the inverse problem is that you can compare here on the left the scalp topography of some raw data or ERP data and the scalp topography of ICA component. On, on the left, it's going to be hard to localize or interpret. You're going to use, need to use uh, many different sources in different parts of the brain to try to localize uh, this activity. On the right, it's relatively easy to interpret. Usually we can just put a single dipole in the brain and, and localize and, and localize this dipole with very high accuracy for a component. So this is what we mean by ICA solves the first half of the inverse problem. And there is many other, there's a whole lecture on ICA where uh, we'll go deeper into that. This is just a teaser. So these are the dipolar scalp projection for components. So here we have a component projected on the uh, 3D head mesh. And this is, for instance, the dipole that would represent uh, the activity of the scalp topography. This is another one, and this is the other dipole. When we actually localize them, it looks like this. So uh, you can see the dipole and their 3D projection on each of 
of the axis and so this dipole will generate different scalp uh, um, yeah, topographies and the idea is that ICA creates spatial filter for functionally independent uh, sources. So in EEG lab source reconstruction, so you use ICA for separating sources and then we have a plugin that's called DeepFit that performs source recognition either, either using single dipoles or you can also use distributed models. We also have an extension that's called NFT. So when you have the individual subject uh, MRI, you can extract head mesh and do advanced source recognition in uh, NFT. And once you isolated the source, you can also uh, uh, perform, uh, look at brain dynamics. So this is the SIFT EG Lab extension. So that's it for this lecture. I'll see you in the next lecture.